Hello. Welcome to Chile TV. And I'm Chi. This video will show you how to detect and how to avoid water hammer in steam boiler system. Uh, at this time around every year, uh, the winter time, the weather getting cold and a lot of problems in the boiler system like water hammer. And uh, every year I heard from the people looking for answer about water hammer, to how to avoid it and how to fix it. And today I would like to share with you how to detect it and how to fix it the problem. I have two reasons to uh, stop the water hammer system. Uh, the first reason is uh, the radiator installed is not properly. The second reason is the cut and switch that I found a few days ago. And water hammer is very dangerous for your steam boiler system. For instance, you could break down through to the pipeline or the radiator crack. And water hammer is very, very annoying uh, sound in your house. Uh, it makes a noise and it's getting crazy. A lot of people complain about the water hammer, very crazy. It makes a noise at night time because the temperature drops, the boiler kick in and steam in the pipe system keep going and make a lot of noise and bang bang on the pipe so uh, with troubleshooting a few days ago i found that uh, one of the radiators was cracked i'm not a certified boiler uh, technician but i have uh, experience in the power plant uh, for 30 years so i know about the system uh, okay uh, that's why i'm trying to share with you how to uh, detect the uh, water hammer and how to fix it. Uh, uh, water hammer is very dangerous. Water hammer is the damage your system if you don't want to fix it. And it's annoying sound in your house. Okay, let me show you uh, why this happened. Okay, this is the radiator was cracked uh, right here. And uh, this one was, uh, this one here was in this box. Okay. It's leak. A lot of steam come out here. It leaked, so I disconnect the the valve. I put the new valve here and uh, a new nipple and uh, shut down the valve so steam not coming up from the bottom. But to replace this is the uh, this is the old type of uh, radiator. Uh, they don't have the same size. But anyway, I'm trying to show you uh, how to adjust the radiator with our water hammer. Usually when they install the radiator in the pipe system, you should have to lift one end up a little bit. Just like this. Up a little bit. If you don't know how to label it, you can use uh, the label here. You see? If you see the bubble in the middle, which means that uh, it no, uh, no angle. You should have a little bit angle up like this. You see the bubble go up a little bit. See? Otherwise the water stay inside here. When the water inside the radiator, steam coming in this way and push the water this way. And the water will fly from here to here. That make a noise. And when the steam release, right? Steam release to the atmosphere, somehow go to the vent valve and the water coming back. Stay here. And they waiting for another wave of the steam coming back again, push, and the water go back here and make a noise, bang, and come back, back and forth, back and forth like this, bang, bang, bang. That's why you hear the noise. Sometimes the steam system uh, will hit the, the pipe uh, from the angle, like 90 degree angle, I don't see here. Usually right uh, at the angle of the pipe system, make a noise right there too but most likely it's right here so to avoid the water hammer from the radiator you have to lift up one side put something on the bottom here in this case I don't see anything happen I check all the radiator all of them they install properly good and uh, and this guy still break I'm going to show you another reason so uh, to eliminate the radiator installation I will show you another reason 
uh, that is cut in Swiss. Okay, that's uh, the first reason I just explained to you how to uh, detect it and how to avoid the uh, water hammer from uh, the radiator. Um, I have uh, after this video I have a little story about uh, the water hammer in the system. Very dangerous. That uh, happened in the power plant. Uh, that Con Edison because I worked for Con Ed for three years. Um, so I'm going to tell you about a story, a little story uh, after this video. So just uh, stick on my video to the end, okay? Okay. Right now I'm next to the well McLean boiler. I'm trying to show you the second reason. Uh, that give you a water hammer in the steam boiler system. Uh, that is a uh, cut in switch. The uh, cut in switch is uh, located behind on the side of the boiler. Sometimes they they uh, put inside here. Let me open up the, the cover. I'm going to show you. This is a front boiler. It's inside the box. All located in here. This transformer right here. This is the controller for the burner. And this is the gas valve, the main gas valve for the boiler. And uh, the cut in switch is right here. This is a cut in switch. Okay. Honey well make. I'll try to open and show you how to adjust it. This is emergency switch. In case uh, you have emergency, flip down, you kill everything. And this is a fit water controller. Uh, after troubleshooting, I find out that uh, the current switch, uh, someone adjust before, is very high, or they forget to adjust it. Usually, the current switch adjust for one and a half or two pounds. Uh, let me open up. You see, right now, uh, I left uh, a two psi adjustment. Before it was high, like up to here, about eight eight psi. So I adjust down to two psi. The normal adjustment for cut and switch is about one and a half to two psi. So let me open up inside the back. Let's see how it look like. Uh, let me see here. And lift up lever. Okay. This is the how how it look like inside the box. This one they call micro uh, micro pressure switch. Oh, there are only two wire inside here. Two wire. I just uh, mount it on the switch. Depend how they use it. Open or normally open or normally close. Okay. So to adjust the switch. You got to adjust from the top here. Show you. Okay, right here. The top here, top nut. You adjust this. You turn in or out to adjust the label now to 2 PSI. You see? Like this, back and forth. But I found that it was adjust for 8 PSI. It's too high. That's why. The boiler never cut off, and more steam go inside the system. That give you a water hammer. That's what I found. Right now, I don't have no more water hammer for more than three days. That's why I'm trying to make this video to help you guys. If the, who look who are looking for the problem, the water hammer inside the steam boiler system. And this is just a small uh, boiler. It's a core low pressure boiler for the residential, the single house, you don't need to adjust very high pressure because high pressure is for the big building, many, many units, like at least four to eight units. But this is for single house, you need to adjust for right about one and a half or two PSI. If too much pressure, the boiler is hard, working harder to build up the pressure. You can see the bear, the pressure build up from the gauge right here. If you look at the gauge when the boiler on light, you see the needle here start to move up to P, two psi, right here. And when it reach two psi, the boiler shut down by itself and rest it until the the pressure drop. 
when the pressure drop, the uh, there is a differential pressure, then that make uh, the ball uh, kick in again. And um, to adjust this, it's very easy. And this is a new boiler. It's only a few years old. I don't know uh, the technician before they install it, and they don't know how to adjust or they, they, they forgot. And that's what I found. And uh, we don't know what the reason why uh, what the hammer is still in the system after I troubleshoot or the radiator, they all at, uh, install and adjust uh, properly in good condition, but still have a water hammer. And uh, I uh, get find out that the uh, cut-in device switch, it was uh, adjusted too high. And sometimes if you see the old boiler, the cut-in pressure switch was uh, defective. Sometimes it's defective, it doesn't work. So you, you have to check it out. You can check it out with the meter and you pump the pressure into the switch or you turn on the boiler and you see uh, you can uh, monitor, monitor the gauge, the pressure gauge. At certain pressure, like 2 PSI, the boiler should, should trip or shut down. Other than that, and then the switch defective. You have to replace or you have to recalibrate it. Right now, I recalibrate the switch. It working good. No more water hammer. Steam pressure in the boiler increased gradually up to uh, one and a half to two PSI and then the cut and switch activated and shut down the boiler. And if you don't uh, have enough, uh, give enough time for the water to turn back to the source, that will create a water hammer. That's why uh, it was uh, set for eight PSI. The boiler keep working harder, harder and harder, and the water don't have enough time to escape the system. That create a water hammer in the inside the steam pipe, and that's why you hear a loud noise. And you can look at this. You see this, this pipe from the boiler here. This pipe here, it came from the boiler inside the boiler, and they have a little pigtail. See the pigtail that uh, to uh, create a pressure build up inside the, and go into the switch gradually. Otherwise, you die, may damage the switch. You should have the pigtail. And, uh, and there is uh, another safety valve right here. This is relief valve. Something happened if the pressure build up too much, this relief valve will open up. That's for safety. And when it's open up, Steam will escape from the boiler and the outside. Okay, right now I'm trying to share with you a little, uh, a, a, a little bit uh, story about a power plant that I have worked for power plant inside of power plant for 30 years, uh, like Con Edison and New York. Uh, okay, cut and switch, right? In the power plant, they have uh, three different transmitters that will monitor the pressure inside the boiler. Usually the pressure inside the boiler about 400 PSI, 1200 PSI, so we have three transmitter. And they take average of three, divide by three, and then they take the, the value of three transmitter that give you the reading of each trans transmitter. And also give you the average. And uh, there are another three more switches that they call digital uh, uh, trip. Three switches that will monitor the pressure inside the boiler. So the three switches and three transmitter, they combine and they go to the logic diagram to trip out the boiler. If something dangerous, they will trip out the boiler. Because the boiler in the power plant, the pressure very high, like 1500 easy. But this is a small uh, low pressure boiler, only two, one or two PSI the most. So in the power plant is different from the house. The boiler in the power plant is big. It's big like, big room like this, very big. And uh, cause I work in the power plant, so I know uh, about the system. Uh, so uh, three switches and three transmitter, a third average of three. And this is the three digital switches that they combine, go to a logic diagram to trip out the boiler or give you alarm to alert the operator the tail technician go outside to fix the problem 
or to uh, something happen in the system, they have to troubleshoot. Sometimes um, in the power plant, sometimes you hear a big sound like in the sky, like a sky van. They call it sky van uh, in the power plant because uh, the safety valve lift uh, that uh, caused by uh, some of the device uh, they shut, they shut down and that create a pressure build up like sky. So the safety valve start to lift it and sky van uh, release a lot of steam from the building. Uh, that for safety. But um, I would like to tell you another story about in the past uh, many years ago, about 28, 29 years ago. Uh, there is a water hammer inside a steam pipe system in the power plant. A 10 inch steam pipe was uh, um, ripped to uh, explode it and that created uh, uh, release a lot of steam uh, over the whole area that uh, made somebody injury and maybe one or two guys die after that because uh, steam take all the oxygen. You don't have no more oxygen, you die. Because that uh, is a mechanic guy. It was uh, 1990 something, I don't remember. So that's the dangers of the uh, water hammer. And in this case, I'm talking about <laughs> the dangerous for low pressure boiler in the house. It just uh, break down your system, like steam pipe system or radiator. That I just show you the radiator was cracked. So that's why I have to replace it and put a new valve in there and looking for the new radiator to put in there. Uh, that story about a power plant and uh, go back to uh, our um, uh, low pressure boiler in the residential. We have only uh, one switch and one safety valve. I think that's good enough because um, it's low pressure but uh, still dangerous too. Uh, if the safety valve doesn't lift, the, the pressure in the boiler starts to build up and it may explode also. It's, uh, but I, I don't think that uh, happened because <laughs> it's not happened like that easy. Um, the only reason I'm worried about the uh, steam pipe system in your house is broken and very hard to replace, especially the radiator, very hard to replace. You look for the new side of the radiator, it's tough to uh, replace them. Uh, right now I have a problem, I cannot find the new radiator, so I have to just put the, the how do you call it? Uh, the main valve in there to stop the steam come up from the bottom up. Okay, I would like to stop my video here. Uh, if you see this video helpful, uh, please uh, give me the thumb up and subscribe my channel. And I will be happy to uh, make more video and put on YouTube. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Gila TV. Bye-bye.